hello welcome to this study of a complex analysis lesson okay so um, if you have not subscribed to the channel kindly subscribe to support the channel as well okay all right so in this lesson we'll just go through what we mean by analytic function i mean solving a lot of questions and that okay all right so let's start if you remember i first mentioned in our first lesson that um, to do complex analysis and do it very well you need to know much about your complex numbers and also your differentiations and your integrations as well okay so these two or three things are very key in complex analysis okay all right so the first question states that we should show that the following functions are analytic and here it is basically being given in z in terms of z okay so you have f of z equals z bar and we have f of z equals e to the z and we have f of z equals z squared and this one okay now if you remember in complex numbers we made mention that complex numbers z the complex number z is being represented as um a plus b i or i b depending on where you are coming from and so some also says x plus i y okay so we we just write the or we just represent a complex number in a argon plane as x and y coordinates where the y will represent the um imaginary part and the x will represent the real part okay so the same idea here i hope you understand all right so let's start with the first one so in order to show that this first one which is the z bar is actually analytic we, we have to use the cash riemann equations which we have to make sure that we break down the z bar into j plus something i or i something okay so that we use these two equations we get our u and our v and then we check if these equations are correct then they are analytic okay so let's start with the first the first one is z bar so if you know that we let our z we know that z is actually equal to x plus i y okay and z bar means what the conjugate of the complex number z which will give me x minus i y okay so in in effect this is the same as x plus i negative y okay if you can see that this is what this means okay so that if you say that then f which is equal to z by the same as x plus i into negative y and then if you compare these this to the general form of f which is u plus i v then our u will be equal to x and our v will be equal to negative y in this case okay i hope you understand this now with this if u is equal to x and our u sorry our, our v rather our v is equal to negative y then del u del x is equal to one our del u del y is equal to zero now del v del x is equal to zero uh, del v del y is equal to negative one now with this if this function given that is this function f which is equal to z bar is the same as is the same as this one okay you see that you say this because when you break z bar down this is what you get if this should be analytic then del u del x should be equal to del v del y now let's go and check if this, that is true del u del x is equal to one and this is it and del v del y is also equal to negative one which means this is not equal to that and hence f which is equal to z bar is not analytic for it to be analytic the two equations should be satisfied okay and now we have only one part being satisfied because the other parts will be true but this part 
it's not true this one so since this is not true it means that the function f of z which is equal to z bar is not analytic okay now let's move on to the second one which says that f of z is equal to e to the z okay and then again if you remember i said that z is equal to x x plus um x plus i y okay Or other books will be, will be saying y i or a plus b but here we are using x and y in terms of the real and imaginary as this okay so here with this e to the z will be then e to the z will be equal to e to the whole of x plus um, e to the power x plus i y okay and now this is the same as e to the power x times e to the i y now e to the i y in complex numbers also has its own way of you know writing it so e to the i y here is actually equal to cos y plus i sine y so it means that our f here will be equal to e to the x times e to the i y which is the same as cos y plus i sine y so in effect alpha f will be finally we can write it as e to the x cos y plus i e to the x sine y so you can keep this some way so that we can go ahead and compare this to our general f so it means that if f is equal to u plus iv then from what we have our u be equal to e to the x cos y now v will be equal to e to the x sine y i hope you are okay now del u del x is equal to the same e to the x cos y if you remember when you differentiate e to the x you get the same as e to the x okay then del u del y is equal to minus e to the x e to the x sine y because when you differentiate this this um function u with respect to y there's only y in the cos part and when differentiate cos y you get negative sign y that's why i had this okay now you go to the v aspect you have del v del x and it's the same as e to the x sine y and you have del v del y and that will be as e to the x cos cos y now to know that this is analytic or not from the cauchy riemann equation del u del x should be the same as del v del y so you go ahead and check del u del x is this and del v del y is this are they the same yes so this is true then you go to the other one which says that del u del x should be equal to negative del v so it's del u del y actually okay should be equal to negative del v del x now let's check for del v del, del u del y del u del y is this one negative of e to the x sine y now let's go ahead and check if when we negate del v del x we'll get del u del y so that this is del v del x okay when you negate it indeed we are getting this one so it means that this is also correct so this means the function f which is equal to f which is equal to e to the z is actually analytic okay it's analytic know how you go about it okay now the next question says f of z equals z squared okay now you know already that z is equal to x plus 
iv okay now with this z squared would then be equal to x plus so this is i y rather plus i y squared okay so this expansion is x plus i y multiplying x plus i y now when you expand that you get s squared i hope you know how to do that expansion s squared plus 2x y i then plus i squared y squared in effect this will give me x squared minus because i squared is negative one so i get minus y squared plus 2x y i okay so this will be the new f that we want so f will actually be equal to, or f of z will be equal to um, this because because there is no z here i would just say f equals that okay so therefore if i'm to compare this to our normal f which is equal to u plus iv then my u will be equal to in this case will simply be equal to s squared minus y squared and let me let me raise and write it well s squared minus y squared and my v will be equal to 2xy okay so del u del x will then be equal to 2x and now del u del y will be equal to minus 2y now let's go to del v del x is equal to 2y now del v the y is equal to 2x now for this to be analytic del u del x should be equal to del v del y so go ahead and check if that is true you check this is 2x come and check this also 2x so this is true then go to the next one which says that del u del y should be equal to negative del v del x so you go to del u del y it is this when you negate del v del x del v del x is 2y when you negate it you get negative 2y is it the same as this that is also true so it means this is correct as well so it means that the function f which is equal to z squared is analytic okay i hope this is cool so let's go to the last one and we'll be done for this lesson okay all right so we have f of z equals e to the i z now this i hope you can do this by yourself but i'll go i will just go through it and see if you can do the rest on your own so z is equal to x plus i y okay and i z would then be equal to i times the whole of this so i'll get i x plus i squared okay times y and this will be equal to minus y plus i x because um you just want to separate the real part and the imaginary part of a complex numbers or a complex number and then mostly we put the imaginary part at last okay so now with this one how do you conclude or how do you go about it now since we know this then it means e to the i z okay let me use another pen e to the i z would then be equal to e to the power of the whole of this and that is minus y plus i x and expanding this we get e to the negative y times e to the i x and this in complex numbers e to the power i x is the same as what this will be negative y into cos x plus i sin x i hope you know how to convert each the power i x to this form now we go ahead and still expand and we get our f to be equal to 
e to the negative y okay e to the negative y cos x let me write it well e to the negative y cos x plus plus um e to the or oh, sorry the, there should be an i here e to the negative y sine x so comparing this to a simple f which is equal to u plus iv we know that our u will be equal to e to the negative y cos x and our v will be equal to e to the negative y sine x so del u del x would then be equal to minus e to the negative y sine x and our del u del y is equal to negative 1 okay e to the negative y cos x because you are differentiating only e to the negative y with respect to y and that is negative 1 times e to the negative y you have to differentiate the power negative y which will give you negative 1 then you multiply it to everything i hope you remember that now you go to del v del x and that is equal to e to the negative y cos x okay and go to del v del y which is equal to negative 1 e to the negative y sine x now for this to be analytic okay for f to be analytic del u del x should be equal to del v del y okay so del u del x is this one is it equal to del v del y okay check and you see that this is true so one part is okay now so now we'll go to the next part which is del u del y should be equal to negative of del v del x and del u del y is indeed this one okay the one with the yellow pen now you go to the negation of del v del x will give me negative e to the negative y cos x and that is the same as this one so it means this is also true so this shows that this shows that this function is what analytic so in effect you are just using the cash Riemann equations you know to prove that indeed some functions are analytic or not i hope you understand what we went through in our next discussion we'll take series of examples on harmonic functions and then we'll go but we we'll go to into um complex integration okay thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you next time